say, well, <clears throat> we hadn't time. And I wasn't thinking in terms of a special school because I felt she needed a new start with normal girls. But it was back to beach home for Gail. As no normal school was said to be available, she had to be put with children who couldn't be coped with in ordinary schools, and she came under the care of Nancy David, a woman who has a remarkable way with children who, like Gail, can be difficult, easily distressed, abusive, even violent. Gives a little edge to him. Things. No, you get the last one, you can have a toffee apple. Close. <laughs> okay, right. Gail didn't have a father of her own. No, she's never known a father. In fact, uh, apart from the odd house father whom she's met and one or two male figures in other establishments where she's been, I suppose I was the only constant male figure. How important do you think you were to Gail? Oh, I think that was very important, actually. Uh, she was ready to reject me from time to time, but I, there was never any doubts that uh, I mattered and that what I had to say mattered. I had some influence with her. But in the end, even you rejected her. Oh, yes, we did, and to our shame. But but why did you do this? Well, we did so because uh, throughout the last period she was here, she was having a very unfortunate effect upon other children, and we saw other children going down in the process. And this is a very unhappy dilemma that anybody running an establishment has, that you have to choose. Sometimes between your need and understanding to, to help the individual and the effect the individual may have upon the group. And unhappily, we reached the point when Gra Gail's influence on the group was unfortunate, to say the least, and very damaging. And unhappily, we had to choose. And we chose to reject her. She was now 16, classed as beyond control and sent to an approved school near Warwick. But they couldn't hold her there either. She used to run away and each time after she'd been on the run a few days and nights, she'd turn up on Mrs. David's doorstep, cold, hungry and defeated, looking for warmth and comfort and a very different world from the only one she'd known so far. But at home, away from her job at Beach Home, Mrs. David had her own family to look after. Her dog, Blackie, was a favourite of Gail's, and she envied the home life of the Davids, although she thought them above her. But for all that, she knew she'd always be welcome, as long as the law allowed. I took her all the way back to Warwick myself once to prove to her that she did have somebody and to prove to the other girls in the place that she was not a girl without anybody. And we I remember where we made a... Oh, it was a terribly hot day, and we made this long, long journey up the M1 on a lovely afternoon, we arrived in this place in the very late, too late for lunch. And um, this girl and I had got into a reasonable frame of mind to go back. And on arrival, although she was courteously received, she was immediately whipped away and put into solitary confinement. And I was quite appalled about this, that this girl had been taken from me without ceremony, not roughly handled, quite courteously and cold-bloodedly put into solitary confinement. And after I had taken tea very graciously with a most charming headmistress, whom I felt all the time didn't really subscribe to the system she'd inherited, she took me to say goodbye to Gail. And there she was, upstairs in an attic room, where there would have been no escape, with nothing in this room but a mattress on the floor and a bucket where she had to go to the toilet. And that, that was it. She was shut in that room with a mattress on the floor and, and a bucket. And that was her punishment. A few months later, Gail was moved on again, this time to a mental hospital. She was placed in a ward with elderly disturbed patients, though no one seems to know why. She ran away as fast as her young legs could carry her, back to Mrs. David's house. For one whole week, this girl was here in the house and... Uh, Neither the approved school nor the mental hospital would accept the responsibility for this girl. Both argued it was the others to remove her, and all the time she was here. Had I not been prepared to have her, she would have been at the mercy of whoever happened, because no one ever on one occasion checked where she was or what kind of a setup she was in. In fact, when eventually uh, a quite high-ranking home 
office official at the request of the CID instructed the mental hospital to collect her. They came down here uh, and they said we had no idea what to expect at all. And in fact, they had come with a straitjacket prepared to have to remove her. And I was very indignant when they came to the door. They stayed. It was 11 o'clock at night, and Gail had been sitting ready to leave since 10 in the morning. And I had packed sandwiches in a Tupperware box for her. And, and I said to her, now when they come, you put coffee out for them and receive them in a proper manner, which she did. And they couldn't believe that this was the girl they'd been sent to collect. A few weeks later, Gail was moved on again to Farringdon House, an approved school where the rules are rigidly applied in isolated South Devon. Dear Mrs. David, I hope you're keeping well as I am. I would have wrote before, but I wasn't allowed to. It's stricter here than it was at Knoll Hill. I'm only allowed to write to my mother, really, but as I don't write to her, they let me write to you, and I hope you will write back to me. But I'll quite understand if you don't. I can only write letters on a Sunday. I have been here two weeks and I haven't had any letters since I've been here. I'm only allowed one parcel a month, no matter how big or small it is. Give my love to the kids at school and Mr. and Mrs. Banner and please explain that I would write to them if I could. But maybe when I've been here a little bit longer, they may let me. There are 60 girls here and it's like a farm. I remember you once said I would do well on a farm. I think I will get on better here than I would have at Knoll Hill. It was too easy, really. I often think of the little kids in Beach Home. If you have some photos, could you please send me them? Loads of love, Gail. P.S. I hope you haven't forgotten me. Please write back. And I sent the parcel. And it will give, I can remember clearly that it was, I sent it in a Dunlop Prim plimsoll shoebox belonging to a child in the orchard that had had a pair of new plimsolls in. And we packed this little box up together with three comics. One of them was Marilyn, one was Mirabelle, and something other or other that she was rather keen on at that time. She was only 16, you see. And um, about two shillings worth of small sweets, you know, the kind of things you get on what I call the penny tray. And I got a letter back from the headmistress saying, in future, would I kindly not send such lavish parcels to Gail that in future she should have, she, she had everything she needed and that in future I was to send things like soap but under no circumstances talcum powder because these were all that Gail needed and I was so shocked, I made up my mind, I said, I've still got that letter I was so shocked about it that I, I thought well here is a grossly deprived girl, a few sweets were a very comforting thing. And this girl who had no background, nobody, you would have thought they would have been so pleased that someone should send a parcel from a place which was a link with her past, which she so desperately needed. But all I got was this chilling and chilly letter. Uh, oh, and the thing which really made me angry about that letter was, and only the better kind of magazine. What do you call the better kind of magazine, the lady? Dear Mrs. David, I had a fight the other day and now I'm locked up for it. I don't know how long I have to stay locked up, but I don't care. They can keep me in here forever and I still wouldn't care. We have to wear the uniform all the time. I'm not allowed to write to Mary and I bet she will think